October red back in ACOTS green with the main man himself. I don't like to say I've got favourites, but I've got favourites. Max McCracken, the one and only. Welcome back. And what are you having? Are you okay? All the better for seeing you. Max, talk to us about what's happening in the gym. Talk to us about your fighters. I'm going to start with Tion Gibbs as he was the last one to fight. Yeah, he boxed Friday. Tion did last Friday. Had a good win against a good experienced kid. So just looking for an opportunity you now. We had a phone call the other day. A decent fight for him. He accepted the fight, but the kid went with someone else, so it was a pity. But he's always ready. He's always in the gym. So any calls, any of the promoters are out there, needs someone at lightweight, Tion will be ready. Tion's someone that definitely stays ready. I think I saw his uh, IG stories what, just ran 10 miles just for the hell of it. Talk to us about your training with your fighters, Max, because I, I don't know if everybody else knows, but you're a bit of a taskmaster. You like fighters with good discipline that are able to listen. Yeah, I mean, the, the ones I've got at the moment, they're, they're all like that, luckily enough. They're, they're, they're nice kids and, and they're real grafters, like Solomon, you know, for heavyweight. He's got a great engine, works really hard. Corey Gibbs, just never out of the gym. You have to tell him to take a day off here and there. Same as Tion, they're always training. And Tory Ellis Willits, same. So I'm quite lucky, really, that I've got the way they are. But, um, you know, you, you don't have to, um, you know, get onto them too much. They know what they've got to do and, you know, just great to work with. We can move on to Corey then. Corey had the rematch of his fight that, you know, whatever happened in Bournemouth when he didn't get the win. But he went back and he settled that score. Taught Corey spoke to me and he said he had so much, like every single day, he was just thinking about righting that wrong. What was it like training Corey up until that fight, Max, with, when he had that pressure of, I've got to win this fight? Yeah, it was just bizarre. The first one was like... It's, I've never known anything like it in boxing, like the circumstances. But it wasn't Corey's fault. These things happen, don't they? But he, he done well in the first one because that gumshell just kept coming out. I think coming out about seven times. The ref was on our case, warning us. So, you know, I thought he still won the fight. Well, he did win the fight. But, you know, with the points deducted, it sort of went to Jimmy. But Jimmy's a good kid. He's, you know, very durable, very fit. He lives the life. You know, I think his diet's great and all that. So he's not, he's not a walker. You see his age, but like... He fights like a younger kid, do you know what I mean? He's, he's got an engine, he's tough, he's durable, you know, he's game. He'll throw punches, you know, even if he's not landing, he'll keep throwing, he'll keep the pressure on you. So, like, Corey boxed really well, you know, boxed and moved and turned it on when he needed to. But we knew that was always going to be the case. So, it's just good to clean the slate and look forward now. The next fight has got to be a title for Corey. Has to be for a title. I mean, he's had a couple now with um, three with Sky, so... I think that they promise us the next one's going to be for a title. So hopefully that should be, I don't know, probably around September. Yeah, it seems as if Sky Sports Box are hopefully looking to do some more shows in Birmingham. And as a Birmingham man yourself, an ex-fighter yourself, what does that mean for our city, Max? Yeah, it's, it puts a buzz around the town, doesn't it? Well, around the city. And, you know, there's a lot of good local fighters up here. There's some good ticket sellers as well. So like, yeah, they just need to keep coming back, come back regular, and they'll build it up. You've got like Ben Whitaker. Um, Fraser Clark, Corey Gibbs, um, Tyler Denny, and, and there's others that I've you know I haven't mentioned, but Sam Eggington, you know they're all big, they're all got big names, you know that really start pushing it in Birmingham there. But yeah, good. We can move on to Tory. Just spoken to Tory, you know she got a pro debut. It was literally like yeah, I, I, I'm waiting to be signed. Then yeah, I'm signed. It's yeah, I'm like fighting tomorrow. It was so rapid, and then for her to go in there and get that third round stoppage from somebody that she's mentioned, Nina Hughes couldn't get out of there. Talk to us about Tori Ellis Willits and and her progress. Yeah, she's took to the pros really well. Tori has. She's um, she's really talented. I think you know. She, I can't, I'll be surprised she doesn't win a world title. You know, she's that good. I think two, another two or three fights, she's ready for a world title. You know, that's how good she is. That girl that she fought, I think she had 131 fights and she'd been stopped maybe six times, but Tori just beat her up. She was just all over. She was too much. You could see in the girl's face, you just watch this. She's like a whirlwind on her. But yeah, really good. <clears throat> really good um, start to her pro career. What is next then for Tori? Because the good thing is she said she signed with Fight Zone and they're actually being broadcast. And this is something that I didn't know. They're on BBC iPlayer. So once again, eyes on the fighter. Talk to us about obviously that deal, getting it done. And why was that the best for Tori? 
Well, it was, you know, she's got security now. She's got like these dates, these set dates with um, Dennis Hobson's been great. He, um, you know, he's shown a lot of interest in Tori. He believes in her the same as I believe in her, and we're going to get her there. But um, yeah, she's got like five fight deal the first year, so you know, she's got something to work to now all the time. And it was a great show. It was a really good show. It was in the Magna Center. She really enjoyed it. It was a really good night, you know. But there'll be tougher days than that. But she knows that. But yeah, a really good start for someone, you know, just coming into the pros. When we talk about females in the division and, and Tori is keen, very keen to put a name on the map, you can see from her energy, the way that she speaks, she is not going to shy away from anybody. You as an experienced manager, an experienced coach, how do you guide a very keen fighter like that? How do you guide them and not let them like rush into things too soon? Yeah, but she needs to get, you know, she needs to fight some you know, a bit more, ex she needs more experience, a couple of more fights and she needs, hopefully can get some rounds in, gets the rounds in, you know, and, and they move quicker than women do, don't they? They move a lot quicker. So I think four fights, she's ready. She'll be ready. Four or five fights ready for a world title. Nina Yuzu's got it at the minute. We'll, we'll look forward to that fight in, I don't know, within a year's time. Yeah, Tori mentioned that she's got some advantages compared to Nina Hughes and, and two of the things that stood out to me, she mentioned that her engine Tori's engine, she believes, is more stronger uh, and that she'll, you know, when Nina starts to fade out, she'll come in and she's a stronger fighter. She's got more of a power punch. Yeah, she's got a bit of everything, Tori. She's got, um, she's got a good jab. She puts her shots together well, head and body. She can go through her gears. She, you know, she's getting better, a lot better defensively, working on the de defence. She's, she's going to be the complete fighter. But you've got other girls like Shannon Courtney. I mean, that's a fight as well we'd be interested in. That This is within a year. One of them, any of them in that division, you know, we'll be looking at, after about four fights, we'll be looking at to fight them. If Nina uses unified and still got these titles, that's a massive fight, in the, you know, down the line. From where you started to where you've ended up before we end on this conversation about Tory, the female boxing division from where you started to where it is now, Max. Talk to us about, you know, the leaps and bounds, how much it's come on. Yeah, they're getting, they're a lot better. The girls are, you know, you, you just, you look around all over the, the different weights. You can see, you know, they're, they're turning to class fighters and you, you look, see some of these women's fights, they're better than the men's. You know, they're, they're entertaining. They're, you know, they've only got two minutes, so they can't, they haven't got the time really to, to be having to look for too long and going for walks and that. So it's like, a lot of it's like non-stop action, isn't it? But yeah, it's, it's really come on the women's boxing. We're going to move on to the heavyweight. Then your heavyweight, Solomon Dakers, English champion. There was, there's been so much hoo-ha about the British belt. We'll touch on Fabio Wardley. It seems as if, obviously, Fraser Clark was mandated by the British Boxing Board of Control. And obviously, the rest spilled out on the internet and the interviews. And, and it is what it is. He was pulled out of that fight or he declined to have the fight, however you want to look at it. One of the opportunists or another person that's been in the mix for it now is David Adelaide. However, I have suggested or implied why isn't it Solomon Dakers, your heavyweight, that's more than capable to take on Fabio Wardley? I'm not sure the, the politics of it. Although no, it was Fraser was nominated, wasn't he? No, that, that never happened for whatever the reason. But there, it seems to be Adelaide's next in line. But I mean, it is what it is. You know, Sol's only had six fights. So like, it's not the end of the world getting a couple of more fights, get the experience in, and then he's, he'll be ready. He's ready. He wants to fight them now. But, you know, you just want a few couple of more fights, don't you? And then you go in there fully prepared, knowing that, you know, you've done everything you need to do. How is it then when a fighter is, like, keen to move forward, push on with their career, somebody that's keen to have titles, you know, to become a champion out of Birmingham, the frustrations that you have to deal when things don't necessarily go your way, how do you deal with that as a team? It's just all about timing, isn't it, really? You know, with these fights, it's got to be the right time, you know, for your fighter. So, like, it'll, it'll come. It's not it's not far away. But, um, you know, I suppose Adelaide and uh, Wardley will fight. That's supposed to be the next one. And then we'll be looking at the winner of that. We like it. I'm going to ask you for your opinion then. We had Fraser Clark versus Marius Wack uh, more recently. Your thoughts then on that fight, the fight itself, the opponent... And how it went from a trainer's eyes, from a manager's eyes, from your eyes, Max? Yeah, well, I only watched two rounds. So I had to be in the gym early this morning. So I'll catch up with that today, the rest of the day. But I like Fraser. And um, it's a decent win for him. But Marius Rack's seen better days, isn't he? Let's be honest. I mean, what is he, 43? Yeah. 
But yeah, he's got the he's got the rounds in Fraser. That's the main thing. Is you know another win on the record. So he's like developing, isn't he? He's developing himself for these title fights. So yeah, that that that's okay. You know, he's he's fought a decent name and got the win, got the experience in. So yeah, that's okay. How do you find like the 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 boxing? Uh, politics. I mean, we're seeing it further up the line now with Anthony Joshua making his return, you know, a corner that you've been in, a fighter that you know quite well. We can touch on him. His comeback then, you know, his fight with Jermaine Franklin and then a potential maybe with Dillian White or not and then moving on to Deontay Wilder in December. Your thoughts on Anthony Joshua's comeback, Max? I thought it was with Franklin fight. He looked a little bit hesitant at times, you know, didn't really should could let his hands go a little bit more. But Franklin's not a bad fighter. You know, he's a decent fighter. But I just think he's got to... Um, he needs, like, if he's going to have another fight in between now and Wilder, he needs someone that's tough and durable that can, you know, try and give him some rounds going into the Wilder fight. The Wilder fight's a dangerous fight. He lands once, you're in trouble, you know. But um, they're the sort of fights he's got to be in now. You know, he's been world champion, like, six years ago, isn't he? You know, so he's got to be in them top fights. And I don't think he, he'll get up for the anything below them. But he's got a chance with Wilder. You know, Wilder's, you know, he's not the best technically. He's not, you know, Joshua can, Joshua can keep him on the jab and pick his shots. You know, don't get hit with anything big. You know, he's, he's got a chance. You know, you can't write him off. Do you think that Dillian White is the right fight when you're saying somebody tough, somebody durable? Or do you think he should fight another opponent? And if so, who? Dylan White's fight is a decent fight, isn't it? You know, Dylan White always comes to fight. You know what you're going to get from him. So it'll be entertaining. The build-up will be good. Yeah, it's a good, people want to see that fight. So finally then, Max, the gym is here. It's getting bigger, decorated, more rooms. It's like a TARDIS in here. What? How can people get down here, get involved? And what are the plans for ACOT's Green Boxing Gym? Well, you've seen it in here, haven't you, today? It's just like... In it, you're coming, you can't move in there. This gym is massive. It's probably the biggest gym in the country. It's got everything S and C. He's got like 30 bags in there. He's got three rings. It's just everything you need in there. But the amateur side of it, it's just mobbed. There's, there's like a waiting list to get in there. So like, that's how busy it is. I mean, the pros were in the daytime. It's just quiet. It's private in the day. So yeah, it's a great gym. But it's plus he's got the back room done. So that we're putting their own shows on in there now. So for the kids, being active like that, you, you can't ask for more. They're just going to be, you know, they're just going to be improving all the time, aren't they? Fighting regular. Before we leave, of course, we can't leave out young sensation Matty Harris. What's happening with young Matty? Yeah, <clears throat> he's boxing shortly. I can't announce anything yet because it has, it'll be announced officially Monday. Oh. But he's um, he's got a tough fight. He's got a, a big step up. I think he's a big step up. The kid he's fighting has, had, has never been stopped. He's had 23 fights. So he seems very durable. Let's just see. How he gets on, Matt. I think he'll get him out of there. You know, if he if he takes his time and sets his shots up. But yeah, it's he's, he's a big step up. So he'll be out soon. And you know, he's he's doing really well. Matt is improving. He's coming on. He's, you know, the main thing is he's he's progressing. We think he's progressing with these fights. The last one was a to blow out first round blowout, and his profile is getting bigger. And people, you know, they should tune in and be on Channel Five, regular Channel Five shows. And you know, it won't be for long before he's on the big shows as well. I'm not giving any criticism, but just something that, you know, we hear online is like, oh, the Channel 5 fighter, they kind of like play it down. Like, you know, Channel 5's not Sky Sports. It's not DAZN. It's not this. It's not that. Your answer to those critics that would say, oh, you know, he's only on Channel 5. If you look at the numbers that they do, you know, you compare it to the others that, that you know, it's, it's leagues above them, isn't it? Like one and a half million was his last fight. He's got a slot at 10 o'clock, like a prime slot. That's when everyone's tuning in. The last one was like over 1.5 million. Like you, show me where there's other viewing figures like that. Sky don't do it. The Zone don't do it. You know, I don't know any of them. Um, top rank, none of them. But I don't think they're that much. So, yeah, he's okay. He'll just you know keep progressing through Channel Five, and then the big fights will come. Are titles something that you're looking at for Matty? I know he's young. I think, what, is he 23? A title something that you'd be like considering for him? Or is it just kind of like a steady progress to make sure he gets those rounds? And due to, obviously, his, his low amateur career number. <laughs> yeah, he, um, he only had seven amateur fights, so we've got to take our time with him. Right, but there's, um, we're looking at a title at the minute, hopefully for in a couple of fights. 
exciting. I like that. Sounds like a bit of an exclusive. Max? It'd be, it'd be not this fight, the one after that. You know, there's a good chance you'll fight for a title. Things we love to hear on a Saturday. Max, thank you so much for your time. Hi, and thank you for watching October Red Boxing. Like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications. You can also find us on Instagram at October Red Boxing and on Twitter, October Red UK. And remember, at October Red, we stay ready.